As Kai mentioned, I will be co-presenting with Bill Kolisch. So we'll hand off uh, somewhere along the way. Um, and the focus of this is to talk about pumping and spraying UHPC. Of course, specifically still like UHPC. I am going to skip right over the UHPC introduction um, and go right into first what is traditionally being done as far as pumping and spraying UHPC. Again, to create the contrast to really highlight the benefits of the, the new pumping and spraying equipment that Steel Like has designed, uh, fabricated, and uh, put into production, and to wrap up with a few conclusions. So I'm going to skip right over that. And, and really present the need. Um, so these are just two somewhat random photos of, of traditional concrete pumps. And of course, there's also the, you know, the big uh, boom pumps as well that are used with concrete. They, they come in multiple different sizes, but with probably a, a few exceptions, they, they all rely on the same pumping technology, which is a really a piston driven system that sucks in the concrete in one piston and then pushes it out the other piston. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a summary of, of these three bullet points. Um, but the point here, well, let me have a diagram of how that, how that works. So this is just something I, I found on the internet. But if you imagine, as it shows, this, this piston is, is withdrawing, so it's sucking concrete into the cylinder and this piston is operating in the opposite direction which is forcing the concrete into the discharge valve and then the, the cycle reverses and you see this um, horizontal plate shifts so that what was the input valve then becomes the output valve and just keeps keeps on alternating and what that does to USB-C in particular is it creates a whole lot of friction and friction, of course, generates heat, and heat is really the enemy of UHPC with regards to workability. If it gets too hot, it becomes too stiff, and then you can't place it, you can't consolidate it, and depending on how bad it gets. And you know, in the past, um, contractors have used conventional pumps with UHPC. Uh, one notable project was the Pulaski Skyway. Um, and the experience there, I, I was a designer at the time before I joined Steel Like and also performing construction support. Um, the, the pumping worked well in early spring when it was cold, but nonetheless, the, the technician, the supplier technician, had to really scramble to constantly adjust the workability, make, make it excessively workable going into the pump so that what came out the other end was properly workable, for lack of a better term. And that, that worked well when it was cold out, but when the temperatures, the ambient temperatures warmed up, everything, everything went downhill, so to speak, because it just got too hot and the material coming out, coming out of the end of the hose was almost like a bread dough consistency. It, it could not be consolidated. And contributing to that was also not just the pump adding heat and friction, but they had um, a black, black hoses and a black pipe up to 300 feet long. So now that's also adding additional heat from the sun. And additionally, those, those pumps they have a lot of internal parts that can wear and break down. Um, and they're very time consuming to clean, notably from, from the Skyway project, when the owner told the contractor, you need to stop pumping, at least temporarily, till we kind of get a sense of what's going on here. The contractor you know, really protested loudly, but the owners, owner stood firm. The contractor switched to just using buggies, and then he never, he never wanted to go back because he discovered that all the time being spent cleaning out the pump at the end of every shift was, was enormous and costly, and it was actually more efficient just to use buggies. So. Hence, there, there's a lot of drawbacks to using conventional concrete pumps with UHPC. And of course, that also would translate to spraying, because in order to spray, you have to pump it. So that's really the, the backstory as to why Steel Like um, 
designed and invented, designed and produced two, two units to pump and spray UHPC. You want to step in here, Bill? Well, I, I, I'm not quite sure when you want to take over. You want to take over now? Uh, okay. So I mean, it's just like advanced left and right. So this is what's on the screen. This is what they're seeing in that. So they keep next. going. I'll step in with the pretty picture. All right. So, so Steel Lake has designed, produced, and is now you know brought into um, into deployment two units that we're calling the the SUPA, uh, which is just short for System for UHPC Placement Acceleration. These are patent pending systems. Um, and rather than the conventional piston-driven technology that I just you know, described the shortcomings of, it uses squeeze pump technology, which um, eliminates a whole lot of moving parts. So the UHPC is no longer being pushed and pulled within pistons and things like that. It's just being kind of edged along through, through the hose. So therefore, it really eliminates the, the heating or overheating issue. Uh, and with the large unit, we can pump and spray up to 100 feet vertical to answer your question again, sir, from previously. Um, and, and technology is extremely easy to clean. You can just um, put like a, a rubber ball on it, right? And some and some slurry and just pushes everything out. So here we have some pictures. As I said, it comes in two different sizes. On the left is the, the large unit, which has a, oh, yes. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, and I can get to operate. Um, the first thing I had to do was Michael mentioned paying homage to 50 year old technology, which was <coughs> squeeze pump technology. Everybody just visualizes having a straw that's vertical and go under water, fill the straw up, and then at the bottom, water is straight straight up out of the water, keep it pinched, and pinch just above the initial pinch, and then just squeeze as you slide. Pretty simple you know, concept. And then bend that in a U. And the pinching of your fingers, the machine, and it's pinching every revolution, and that pushes the material. That would have been great that four years ago I tried that. And what made it unusual is uh, the steel fibers. So if everybody loves the steel fibers, I'm sure you all like grabbing them with your fist. Uh, they're right with needles that don't happen to be hollow. They're half inch generally long with a brass coat. So all I ended up doing was creating a, a bad cartoon with a cactus or something. But there was needles everywhere. And it started filtering the product. And uh, the whole thing became a uh, expedition of clogging of metal fibers. And that didn't work. So we had to um, go to Japan and find, we had to make tools to make tools. We had to dissect any existing squeeze pump. The, the, the one on the big machine is about six feet tall with a three inch ID hose. Everything had to be changed. So a year and a half of failure, about a, a million dollars, and we finally figured it out. And that's what the patent pending technology is. Next thing Michael mentioned earlier, and it works for uh, Peter over here, he's falling asleep. Come on, Peter. We're almost done. Um, and all, all the UHPC suppliers, this heat is generally the enemy um, until it's placed. Once it's placed, we all love heat because things start and uh, take off for the most part. So we had to find a way to eliminate ice. Um, we had to eliminate a lot of things. The, the big unit on the left, you could take it in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Uh, it's got its own power plant. It has an off, offshore uh, rigging uh, chilling system that it's not really obvious, but to the left, red hopper, the upside down triangle on the left hand side, and serpentine with two inch copper hose all over the place. We have a heat exchange custom made in the, in the uh, 400 gallon tank of water. So we can drop the water down to anything we want. We can cool the tank to 32, 33 degrees. Um, and that took a little work, and everything is hydraulic. You'll see the upside down triangle again on the left, the one, two, three, four, five black dots are one hydraulic motor, motor with the equivalent of an A cylinder truck Ford F 150 engine. So you could throw 
could throw a tree in that thing and just chew it up. Uh, that means we don't have to worry about how the fibers go in because one of the challenges with the uh, mixing fibers is generally how you put them is how they come out. Everything is an auger technology, everything's geared. We can run each auger independently at any, any speed, any direction. And that, that allows it to, to mix in about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. We can do three yards. The unit, unit to the right, you'll see one truck engine, so to speak, one hydraulic. Um, that guy will go about 75, 75 feet. And then lastly, I'll talk briefly about the Venturi effect. We had to modify the, the nozzle, you know, the back pressure needed to push UHP 100 feet plus and then atomize it and spray it and make it into UHP C shock creep is outrageous. So, uh, part of our patenting system is modifying the nozzle. Actually, Batteries die. Hello. So <clears throat> the nozzle actually sucks the material out the nozzle. It's atomized in a specific way, and we're injecting an accelerator. Uh, so many fluid ounces per hundred pounds of cementitious, and that allows us to spray this wall. And by the time it hits the wall, it's dry. Or we can spray out wall and wait five minutes and trial it to make it pretty. Or we can spray out wall without it melting and have it have it go for an hour. And that that took about a year to figure out. Michael, why don't you uh, finish up? So this is this slide just has a kind of summary of the capabilities. Bill addressed probably most of them. Uh, but just to cover everything, so each of the super units has its own generator. Each unit can mix by itself, um, and of course they can both pump. And as Bill mentioned, the large unit also has a tiller, so then that way there's no need for any ice because it is self-cooling. Um, because they have generators on board, um, you know they're completely self-contained. No external generators are needed. This is no ice needed with the larger unit, and technology is extremely extremely reliable. Um, a lot of UHBC specs will say, well, you have to have a minimum of two mixers because the traditional mixers have a history of breaking down. Well, um, that should not be the case with these units. So um, it should be able to be used on an individual basis. Um, yeah, typical loading mixing time, about 20 minutes. Um, yeah, they both, can, they both can easily be paired with a ready mix truck or any other large batching unit. If you just wanted to have continuous non-stop flow, um, the small unit can actually do continuous batching because you can mix while discharging. It has two different hoppers. That's another way to have continuous batching. A large unit is um, designed to be lifted by a crane to put it where you want it. A small unit, of course, is, is meant to be towed, so you can also put that wherever you want it. Um, and you know, similar to direct placement, there, there'll be very little waste. Uh, compared to using buggies to move material around, if, if that was your alternative method. So the, the following slides, I'm just going to brief introduction. <clears throat> um, the, the mini SUPA had its uh, debut at Iowa State University. In fact, Suri Srithran, Dr. Srithran, is going to be talking about this project following this presentation, so I don't want to steal too much of his thunder, um, but I have a couple of videos showing the mini super in action for both pumping and spraying, but I'll leave it to him to tell you exactly what what was being done and why. So here, here you can see the pumping of the UHPC, and again, this is the small unit, and the, the material was pumped uh, as a means of filling in this um, top frame. And again, uh, you can see it's designed to be a pile cap, but uh, again, don't want to steal serious thunder. So that's the pumping in action. And, and then there's the spraying. So sprayed UHPC is basically UHPC shotcrete, just another way of saying it. As you can imagine with regular shotcrete, it can be used vertical applications, overhead applications. And um, I believe, we believe this has a lot of 
a lot of need. There's, there's a potentially large market out there for it because just think of all the um, deteriorating abutment walls from uh, salt spray and leaky joints, um, culvert repairs. There's a lot of applications where spraying of UHBC can make a lot of sense to give cost effective and of course durable repairs. And of course, if you're spraying it, you don't need form, so it can go a lot, a lot faster. And and I, I do believe that concrete repairs is really an untapped market for UHPC. Um, and having more more easier ways to get the UHPC in place can um, open up that market. And it, so here's a video of the UHPC being sprayed. Uh, my understanding is Bill was just jumping in to show the, show the students how it was how it needed to be done. Hence, he uh, didn't have his PPE on. All well, the students in the in the bunny suits, uh, I guess they weren't confident to grab the nozzle right away. And and uh, there's also spraying of a, a vertical element. This kind of just shows you the spraying in action. And Sri will tell you a lot more about that. Anything else you wanted to add, Bill, before I end it? Thank you, for designing Yeah. So that, that's the end of our material. I'd be happy to take any, any questions.